Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to the Versus Stars podcast. How are my loyal listeners? Thank you for your continued support. And remember, click the subscribe button, everybody. It's an amazing episode because Sloane Avery boards the mothership. You know her as Rosie? I'm the consultant on Amazon Prime. Come aboard as we go traversing the stars. Hello, Miss Avery. Thank you so much for coming to the Traversing Stars podcast. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. It's an a- absolute honor to speak with you. The consultant is a fantastic show, so thank you for coming on. Oh my gosh, thank you. I love that. <laughs> of so, course, I'm happy to be here. So I always start off the question of inspiration. So what inspired your love for acting and who are your earliest influences? Oh, that's good. Uh, my my earliest influences. Oh, man. Well, honestly, I would have to say Cameron Diaz. Mm. <laughs> like the first, my, I guess who inspired me in my love for acting was um, my mom. My mom kind of got me into you know, acting and arts and things when I was really young. And I was really shy when I was little. So uh, I think that was her way of getting me to break out of my shell. And, you know, I've, I've, I've always been told all these stories about how I was like so shy and I wouldn't talk and like, I would just like hide behind my mom's leg. And so I think that was her way of putting me out there and getting me comfortable in in the real world. And so acting was kind of like my outlet for that. And (laughs) When I was little, I watched the movie The Mask Mm. and I saw Cameron Diaz in that. And I was like, whatever she's got going on, that's (laughs) what I want to be when I grow up. I was like, she comes in, you know, she comes in with the red dress and she just shakes her hair out of the rain. I was like, she's amazing. (laughs) I want to be just like her. So that's kind of, I think that was my first real uh, inspiration for wanting to be an actress. So when did you realize you were good at it, though? (laughs) <laughs> am i <laughs> apparently you're I successful you kind of, so yes yeah i think you kind of realize that uh like when things when other people tell you i think uh, you always think like you could be better you know when you're watching your own work you're like oh yeah that really came off nice or that that didn't work or that so i feel like it's it's sort of uh it's up for debate until you guys tell me so you know like it's, i think i think uh I found that I had a knack for it a little bit later in my life. Like when I did acting as a little kid, like just like little theater stuff. And so I didn't really enter the business till I was a little bit older. And, uh, you know, that's, (laughs) it's a bit of a different experience. So (laughs) when I, when I found out that like, oh, okay, like people are taking me serious. That was like, not that long ago. (laughs) (laughs) It's well, different than little kid plays. So, well, as someone who's a very good actor, um, how have you honed your skills? Uh, where did you go to learn how to perform in acting? Um, I have taken loads of classes in, uh, in L.A. specifically. I've worked with some really amazing coaches. And to be honest, I've been really fortunate to work um, and learn on the job. I think that that's a very different experience than the types of things you do in class. like. Most of the really important things that I've learned have been from watching the other actors that I'm working with on set. And to be honest, like even the crew and the and the cameras and like just being around such amazing people that are really, really good at their job. I learned so much from watching others and and definitely from watching TV. I feel like <laughs> watching TV and watching movies, that's kind of my real job or my real <laughs> you know, uh, education is looking around and saying like, oh, what are they doing? And like, how'd they do that? And <laughs> Yeah, that's that's kind of how I like to learn. It's 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 more uh, fun because then you know everything that's going on in the in the world. You know, that's a great thing to say. You know, why are you watching TV? Oh, it's my job. It's my job to watch the movie tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not lazy. It's it's uh, <laughs> watching this for uh, educational purposes. <laughs> so now you can buy a big TV. And it's a tax write off now because it's work expense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. So now you appear as Rosie on the Consultant. So how do you get involved with the series, and what intrigued you about it? Well, I mean, when an email comes across to your desk and it says Christoph Waltz on it, you kind of can't say no. <laughs> it's kind of like, what's more intriguing than that? Uh, it was interesting. Um, we, I think I got the audition maybe a little bit before Christmas of the year, like not this past Christmas, but the year before. 
and it was in the middle of like a bunch of like auditions and things like coming to towards the end of the year and I was like oh yeah like Christoph well I won't get this <laughs> and then immediately they were like oh yeah like you're Rosie that sounds great and I was like for real <laughs> like actually uh why <laughs> you know? um, but it ended up being so perfect and such a perfect role for me and uh yeah I mean obviously it's such a cool interesting story and interesting show I I read the book a little bit and it was very different than what we did, but it was, it was really interesting and intriguing and terrifying. And it's honestly the type of show that I would look for. Like if I was scrolling through, you know, all the streaming things, I'd be like, Oh, I want something like funny, but dark, or like, I really like that dark comedy. And uh, that's, that's just kind of the stuff I like to watch. So obviously I was like, yeah, like, and then if we have first off, like, what's cooler than that what's scarier than that mm, he's a he's a wonderful villain that guy yeah yeah is he i don't know uh, I, I know someone from um, first from a glorious bastards and he was awesome <laughs> so i had never this is terrible i'd never seen that until i was filming <laughs> and oh. then i was like i had a weekend off and i was like you know what i'm gonna we were filming the pilot i was like i'm gonna go and watch that movie because everybody always raves about his performance and then when I came to work the next day I was terrified <laughs> <laughs> I was just like looking at him like mm, like uh. <laughs> but yeah it, it's that's a great movie he's yeah, so good in that he, he is a phenomenal actor I mean it's it's something about how he just presents it that it's evil this humor it, it's it's but so much in one thing he, I mean he is evil in all of his roles, but why is he so jolly? Right. You know what I mean? Like that's like everything. He's so likable. Like you kind of don't want him to be doing the bad. You're like, oh, don't do the bad thing. You're <laughs> such a. You seem like you could be so nice. <laughs> right. Well, even in consultant, like I said, even though well, I can't give anything away, he's definitely probably a bad guy. So don't anyone spoil anything. <laughs> definitely, but, probably. Right. But there's something about him though that is inherently likable. You're just like, I would actually would hang out with him a little bit until yeah. I realized he was, you know, how dangerous he was. Yeah. That, yeah. There's a scene in the show where uh, Nat Wolf, his character goes and gets a beer with him. And I'm like, yeah. I, that kind of sounds fun. Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, you don't really want to go get a beer with your, you know, sinister boss, but like, <laughs> It looks like they had a good time for the most part. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, so, so when you have so when you, when you have Christoph Waltz um, in person, you're watching him do his performance. What are you able to take away from watching someone who obviously, once again, is a great actor himself in his performance that that helps you? Oh wow, he was so helpful actually on set, and he was so he cares so much about the actors that he's working with, and you can just tell like he's that he has a natural calm about him when he's at work he's very focused and he's he's like one of us you know he's obviously not because he has two oscars and he's right. a legend and one of the best actors to ever live but he is also just an actor like he is so cool and comfortable and um it was just really yeah once again educational to be around him because he he doesn't let he's not phased by anything he's very very in control and uh and he obviously the work shows for itself but yeah I learned a lot from him in in that respect like he was so um interested in what was going to make the scene the best and what mm. what making all the other characters really shine with him and and he included everybody so much and it was it was just like a really cool experience to see somebody of that you know caliber and generation like kind of be one of us like because we're all like little like millennial gen z like <laughs> doing our best like oh my gosh like we're all stressed and he's just like it's fine it's gonna be good like, <laughs> you know? so yeah, so he's, he's so great it's gonna be, you assume someone at that when that once again with that legendary career would have it would be kind of like an egoist like on the set it'd be like i no. am chris waltz <laughs> no but it's funny because everybody treats him like oh like mr christoph like whatever and and he's kind of like why <laughs> like you know what i mean he's kind of like he's so humble and he's so sweet and like obviously like intimidating you know like a lot of us were intimidated by him but then also like you talk to him he's so down to earth and so cool and really really smart and um 
he's everything you want him to be and he's not any of the things you probably think he is or he's all like you know stoic or scary or whatever he's not really like that but he probably doesn't want me to tell you that but (laughs) but i know better i know he's a sweet man (laughs) so what was it like when you were acting um across from did like did you guys prepare ahead of time did you have rehearsals did you were you able to just jump in and how long for oh go ahead yeah, no, we would have rehearsal. We would have a rehearsal before at the top of the day and we would kind of go over everything and then we would have a few hours to go back and get ready and do all the things and then come back and and go at it. And yeah, it was it was nice to have some rehearsals and and everybody on the cast was really good about hey, can we run some lines in the trailer or while we're getting ready like hey, like I was thinking about doing this. Everybody was really collaborative and did a really nice job of being considerate of each other and uh doing what was best for the scene and if we had any you know questions or like ideas like we were really good about running them by each other now you now you said you read the book i honestly haven't um yeah. is is rosie in the book rosie's not in the book oh and okay honestly thank god because i just don't <laughs> think she would have made it <laughs> rosie uh has been spared from the book because the book is very very good and it is very very uh messed up like it's messed up in a lot of ways like there's things in the book that are just terrifying like you're like oh like I would hate working there you know like for the most part we all really like working at Compware so it's 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 a little bit different I feel like that that book has some things in it that you're like oh thank god we didn't do that (laughs) you know what I mean but who knows maybe next maybe next season though we're never spared have you heard is is, is it going to be a next season we're, t- we're positive i hope so we'll see <laughs> you never know so so when you got the role of rosie what were you told about the character so little <laughs> so <laughs> little so you get there and um yeah my first my audition scene was the one with uh mama saying in episode two and uh it's this scene where this woman comes in like hysterically crying in Korean and I just don't know what she's saying (laughs) and it's just this really funny scene and so we did I did that for my audition and then when I came to work I asked Tony the the writer and creator I said like so is there anything like you want me to know or you want me to not know or is there like anything that Rosie should be in on or out of like uh in this whole thing and he was like I just I like what you did and I just want to see more of it and I was like great so my control freak inside of me is going what <laughs> like tell me what to do <laughs> and he just didn't he was like to be honest he said that um especially when we did the pilot he was watching us and seeing how we all interacted with each other and and how we you know kind of sunk into the vibe of the set and being at the job and kind of like how you sit at your desk and what you're doing and he kind of wrote around that and i think that was really cool that was a really you know, you don't get a lot of opportunities with um, writers where they're writing around you and writing for you and writing like as you go. And so we, you know, it was really exciting because we didn't have all the scripts right away when we started. So it was like each week we're at work, we're getting the scripts and we're like, oh, did you read episode two? Like, did you read like, and, and like, you could tell there was a lot of our own personalities that he wrote into the, the scenes. And I don't want to give away like the biggest reveal of it but there's this there's this thing that arrives at compware that i personally busted out laughing when i saw it at work and then they wrote that into the scene where i'm just hysterically laughing at this object (laughs) and so i know he did that because of when he saw my reaction to it the day of it was like so funny (laughs) so so when you get a, a character that they don't give you a lot of background on how do you approach that do you create a background was there something oh, yeah. about Rosie that you just were like, well, what if I did it like this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the thing about Rosie is she is the youngest at the office. She is the, you know, happy, bubbly receptionist, which was basically the the breakdown for my character was, you know, that she's the smiling face when you walk into the building. And, uh, you know, so I just thought, OK, what would Rosie what is the thing that makes Rosie happy about her job? And like, she loves all the, all the people at work and she loves to see, like she loves greeting and, and just one of those energetic, happy people. And she's obviously like, 
young and still full of life and probably hasn't worked there that long so she's not miserable <laughs> so I was like okay like you get really excited to go to work like which was me actually at work I was so excited to be there for the job and um so it was exciting to play a character that loves her job because I was loving my job and it was just not really acting I don't think <laughs> it was a little <laughs> bit of just being happy to be there I did do some work on her wardrobe so I met with uh Hannah Jacobs who was our costume designer and she's amazing and from the start she was like I want to work with you on what Rosie likes like what are the colors she likes what did, how does she do her nails and so I I made bracelets like I made like you know I know it was really popular like a year ago like those little uh bead bracelets and so mm. I started making some that said comp wear and Rosie and like I made one for everybody on the cast and like it was kind of like the Rosie thing <laughs> and so we really put a lot of personal details into her looks and styles and all that stuff and that kind of I really think Hannah is the reason why Rosie is the way she is like we really collaborated on creating her her look and her aesthetic so obviously the consultant is around is, is it has dark humor but it's also a mystery so yeah. how so when did you know the ending of the story um and the mystery and how hard was it keeping it a secret from people i still don't know it <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no uh you know what's really funny is yeah we were obviously we get this we were getting the scripts pretty like cut like right before we were doing them like the week before and uh so it was kind of like we were block shooting so we would be doing two at a time and so we were a little bit jumping around it was hard to stay like mentally in the story because you're now I'm in episode four and now I'm doing this and uh it was a little bit of um like a jump back and forth that mm. made you kind of like what's ha what is reality um and so when we got the finale uh script <laughs> I didn't know what the end of it was until we were filming it. And there's this scene where um, Elaine goes and like finds, you know, like at the very, the very last scene, I don't want to give it away, but I did not know until we were sitting there and I had already wrapped and I was just hanging out because uh, Brittany O'Grady and I are friends and I was just waiting for her to get off and we were just going to like hang out and I'm watching her do the scene and I go, Oh, that's, that's, that's the end of the show. And she's like, Sloan did you read the script? And I was like, <laughs> thought I did, but I didn't realize it until like so many things, you had to see it to believe it. I think like a lot yeah. of things in our show are very like, they make sense visually more than like when you're reading it, you're like, what? Oh my gosh, like this is crazy. But then you see it and you're like, oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, the consultant has obviously been very successful. How have you handled this, this success? Um quite well <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun it's a it's really really cool to be a part of a show that I'm really proud of that other people are really excited about and um and, you know I've I've lived with this story for about a year now and when people would ask me about it I had no idea how to describe what was happening I'm like oh there's an elephant and then there's all these things like there's all these things that happen in the show that people aren't going to get unless they enter the world and they watch it so mm. it's really nice to be able to share that with everybody now and people come up to me and they're like oh so that makes sense now <laughs> and before we thought you were crazy and I'm like I know it sounds it's a lot it's like but you once everybody started to see the show it was like oh cool like now we have something to talk about and it's it's been really fun and I'm so excited for all the all the people that are getting to enter that world now because it, it's a really fun one so where can our listeners find The Consultant? The Consultant is streaming now on Amazon Prime. And all eight episodes are out. So you can binge watch it in like, they're all half hour. So it's in, uh, you can binge watch it in under four hours, you know? It's so, it's so fun. And you know, you won't want to stop. And give the audience a wink if we know there's a second season coming. <laughs> <laughs> you guys if you like it then we'll do more i i would definitely hope so so what's what's next for you oh so i can't talk about, I can't <laughs> talk about it. like you'll, you'll be seeing me but um yeah like just more more of this and and more of that you know well when you're ready to talk about that you come on okay i will i'd be happy right, to thank you so much have a fantastic night thank you so much